Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, and this is going to be COVID-19 Part 5 in a series of videos covering the high yield or some of the high yield information surrounding the COVID-19 um, pandemic that we're dealing with. And this information will be fairly contemporary as of 17 March 2020. Today I'm going to be talking, or rather now, I'm going to be talking about disposition, patient disposition. So just to review, basic disposition is 80% of patients with uh, COVID-19 can self-manage. That is to say that about 80% of the time you're going to do okay. You just stay at home, isolate yourself from contact with other people. Uh, typically, it'll run its course in a couple of weeks. You're going to have to have additional testing. Uh, we say that uh, somebody is clear or has recovered from COVID-19 if they have two negative PCR tests at least 24 hours apart. Um, they're no longer shedding the virus. They feel well, and their uh, COVID-19 test is negative. Uh, two individual tests negative at least 24 hours apart. Um, so that's 80% of patients. Approximately 15 to 20 percent of people are going to require admission and are going to require some degree of more complex medical support. Uh, some of that 15 to 20 percent is going to require fairly conservative therapy, maybe some supplemental oxygen, some bronchial hygiene, um, and some monitoring. And then another group will develop full-on respiratory failure, multi-organ failure, ARDS severe viral pneumonia, um, all that nastiness that we've talked about in earlier videos. Okay, but when we really talk about disposition, most of us are most concerned about prognosis. What is a prognosis? What is the mortality? Well, to understand that, remember earlier when I talked about the case fatality rate, the CFR, or some people refer to this as a case fatality ratio. And remember what the case fatality ratio is. A case fatality ratio is when we look at the number of deaths, so the number of deaths, and I divide that by the number of infections multiply that by 100, I don't have to I can just get a decimal, but if I multiply by 100, that gives me a nice percentage. And essentially what this says is this is the percent of people who percent of infections that end up dying, right? That's all it is. Here's a problem. When we talk about prognosis in terms of mortality, it's a little more complicated than what's the total number of people who died divide by the total number of infections, and this is a percentage. It's more complicated than that. It's more nuanced than that, right? So I want to talk about that nuance a little bit. All right, so first of all, the first big point is we don't have a great idea of the number of people infected, particularly in countries like the United States where we've been a little slow off the uh, gate to begin aggressive testing. So we don't know the number of infections. So it's going to be really hard to determine an accurate case fatality ratio in that sense. In addition to that, it is more complicated than just to say, oh, if I get, if I develop COVID-19, I have a, an X percent chance of dying, right? And, and we saw early, earlier on, maybe 3 to 4% case fatality rate. So you might go, oh, well... I have a 4% chance of dying if I get this, and now more revised values are maybe suggesting somewhere around 0.6%. Uh, but again, that, that can be misinterpreted as, oh, I, me personally, only have a 0.6% chance of dying. That's not exactly accurate to say. So what really is the nuance behind this. Well, the nuance behind this is that not everybody has a 0.6% chance of dying. Some people are going to have a much higher percentage chance of dying 
and other people are going to have a much lower percentage chance of dying, and the overall percentage or overall average may be something like 0.6% or perhaps 1%. We'll see what eventually comes of that, right? That's overall, but any given individual, right, is going to have potentially a different percentage. Um, so what are some of the factors that go into that? Well, one of the biggest factors is age. Age is one of the single biggest factors. And from, from information from the World Health Organization, um, we look at um, the ages of people who have died, and we notice some very interesting trends. We notice that if you are under the age of 40, so between 0 to 39 years old, if you are a young person, all right, and I do consider people under 40 young since I'm in the above 40 category now, uh, or have been, uh, your chance of dying is incredibly small, approximately 0.2%. Now, we see that jump a little bit. We see that double once you hit 40. So from 40 to 49, it's approximately 0.4%. So you have a double, right? The chance of you dying doubles. And then at 50%, it goes up substantially higher to approximately 1.3%. And then between 60 to 69, you're looking at about 3.6%, 70 to 79, approximately 8%. And then 80 above, you're looking at close to 15% mortality, super high. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the older you get, the higher your risk, your individual risk will be regardless of the overall case fatality ratio, right? So once you get into that above 50, right, you have greater than a 1% chance or greater than 1% case fatality ratio for your age group. So age is a substantial factor, but there are other factors. Comorbidities also are major factors. So we know patients that have other medical problems, chronic medical problems, immunocompromise, immunosuppression, uh, underlying severe respiratory disease, COPD, for example, cystic fibrosis, underlying cardiovascular disease, uncontrolled, poorly controlled hypertension, diabetes, these patients, regardless of their age, are going to be in a much higher risk factor group, right? Access to resources, right? If I don't have access to good health care, right, my individual prognosis is probably going to be lower than someone the same age with the same medical history who has access to better health care. It's just the way it goes. And then some other uh, possible factors we don't know yet but what about genetics it's very likely that genetics plays a role right some people will have an immune response and that immune response will cause significant damage and it might not be the viral infection that kills them but it's their immune system they develop cytokine storm and that causes multi-organ failure and ARDS and all these other problems and perhaps some people are more genetically prone for, to have that develop. What about viral load, right? What if somebody gets exposed to a substantial viral load? Might that play a, a factor? Maybe we don't know. But really, at, at the end of the day, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to point out that there are there is a lot of nuance behind the, the case fatality ratio, and you can't just take it at face value. You've got to really look at what are some of the major factors. And I will say that uh, we do know for a fact that age and comorbidities are going to be the two biggest known risk factors. The older you are, the higher your risk, and the more comorbidities you have, the higher your individual risk is going to be. Right. So those are going to be uh, patients that are going to be in higher risk categories. Now, does that mean if you are a young, healthy 20-year-old without any comorbidities that you are not going to die? Absolutely not, right? Your individual chance may be low, but again, there is going to be some percentage, somewhere around 0.2% of people in that 0 to 39 age group that get COVID-19, 0.2% of them will die. 
right? So overwhelmingly, the, the representative population is going to be older people with comorbidities, but you're going to have those outliers. And, you, and if you have large enough numbers, you have large enough numbers of people getting infected, you're going to have sufficiently large enough numbers of people dying in all age categories, even though the majority of them are going to be older, less healthy people. We still have to anticipate that some of the patients, some of the people that are going to have more severe manifestation of COVID-19 are going to be younger and potentially healthier patients. We just can't get around that. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to cut it off here. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you can better appreciate the nuance behind the concept of the case fatality ratio. All right, you all take care.